Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, I suppose not surprisingly, what a weaker pound means for investors. So with no more ado, there it is, the Brexit, as it's being called, despite the fact we haven't left the EU yet, but the Brexit drop. So all of a sudden, a surprise result for some people in the EU referendum, and the pound sort of fell off a cliff, dropping sharply to levels we haven't seen for years. Now, it created quite a talking point, as you'd expect. Pound hits 31-year low following referendum result, was the Wall Street Journal's comment. There were plenty of these around. And then the speculation about where we could go from here. Sterling could hit dollar parity by the end of the year. So we could, according to some observers of the market, see a situation where one pound equals one dollar. And there's a lot of speculation around from the big banks and so on as to exactly where the pound will sit once we get to around sort of Christmas time. Now, what's going to keep the pound down? I have seen commentary saying, you know, well, the pound could bounce, a bit like the stock market bounce, but actually not so fast. There are some structural reasons why the pound could stay lower for longer. Not going to commit to exactly where, but those reasons are the referendum result has created a lot of political uncertainty, and markets don't like uncertainty, and the currency is a barometer for some of that uncertainty. More importantly, even before the EU referendum result, the UK was running a big current account deficit, anywhere up to sort of 7% of GDP, depending on which snapshot you look at, but that is big, both in relative historic standards for the UK and compared to other economies. Bank of England may decide to go for further stimulus to ward off some of the sort of uh, post-EU referendum decision fear and uncertainty, and that could come in the form of, who knows, perhaps a cut in interest rates, perhaps more money printing, but those would further weaken the pound, if anything. And, of course, you've got bears out there um, who may or may not be right or wrong, but bears saying, you know, we could be heading as a result of all this for some kind of recession, trying to decouple from Europe and so on. So there are factors pushing down on the pound at the moment. Now, positives and negatives. This is just a snapshot, and it's an investment snapshot. Uh, and it's sort of taking the position of a kind of UK investor, if you like. So, positives. And there are some positives. Exporters will benefit because British goods suddenly become cheaper. And that could actually help us a little bit with the current account deficit. So suddenly, overseas buyers buying UK goods are paying less for them. All right? UK assets become more attractive for overseas investors. So you know, watch that space in terms of the, the property market, for example. Overseas investors might think, crikey, here's a 20% you know, sterling generated discount on where I was just a week ago. So that's worth watching. And dividends may actually increase in sterling terms because a substantial proportion of FTSE 100 companies, for example, generate their earnings overseas in US dollars or emerging market currencies. And suddenly those are worth a lot more in sterling terms than they were before. So there are some positives to come out of that. And um, I've just highlighted this, this idea of accidentally winning the race to the bottom. An awful lot of central banks have been trying to stimulate their economies in Japan, in the US, in Europe, in order to get growth going, to get earnings going again. And perhaps, accidentally, this result has triggered us sort of winning that race to the bottom. Now, it's not all good news. There are negatives. Importers will tend to suffer as uh, input costs rise. So bringing stuff in from overseas gets more expensive, and that's particularly pertinent if anything's you know, priced in dollars, like oil and therefore petrol, for example. The effect will be deferred where firms have hedged foreign currency exposure, to be fair, so people are looking a bit further out than the immediate short term. Um, a structurally low pound could import inflation and trigger interest rate rises further down the line. That's a worry. Um, so China, for example, huge overcapacity, looking to dump stuff around the world, well suddenly, crikey, um, you know, maybe we're going to get imported inflation as a result of our weak pound in part from places like China, and overseas assets were more expensive for British investors. So it's kind of a, a mixed picture in terms of positive and negatives, and we'll need a bit more time to see how exactly how that's going to play out. Now, more specifically, sectors or areas of the economy like to benefit. Well, UK tourism, because suddenly it's a lot cheaper to come here, and I'm sure we'll get a flood of tourists this year. Safe haven assets, such as government bonds and precious metals, remains to be seen how long that lasts, but people have sort of gone, oh, crikey, what's going on? We didn't expect that result. Piled into government bonds, squeeze the yields even further. Firms with substantial overseas earnings streams, especially from the US and emerging markets, okay, will 
on balance benefit from this sterling devaluation and that will tend to mean larger international companies. So the FTSE 100 put in a, a huge post-Brexit bounce, actually ended up above the level it was before the referendum, more so than say the FTSE mid-250, which is more UK focused. So more likely to struggle, and I've given a selection, we don't know for sure, but recruitment agencies, um, basically this sort of crisis, if you want to say it that way, this uncertainty creates reluctance to spend. Firms rain back on their capital expenditure plans, you know, they, they push things back, so recruitment is likely to suffer in the short term. Estate agents could go either way, but there's signs that nervousness is not good in terms of getting property transactions done. House builders, similar idea. Airlines, partly due to the fact that in sterling terms, the oil price is now more expensive and people are less willing to travel from the UK, let's say, commercial property firms and more UK-focused firms. We saw the FTSE mid-250 take a bigger dive and take longer to recover than, say, the FTSE 100. I'm not saying, you know, avoid these, get out of them. I'm just saying the short-term impact is likely to be more negative than positive. OK, that's a very quick wrap-up. A final thought. Periods of volatility generate two reactions. Some investors run to the sidelines. Others actually think no. If I keep a cool head, ignore the media noise, which is bucket loads at the moment, and strip out the politics from investment decisions, that's important. Spot where overselling has taken place, there's been panic, and be a little bit brave, I could see some opportunity here. Any questions, editor at killick.com, and for other videos related to this topic, please see our comprehensive library at killickexplains.com.